Hello, Bobby Torres of Frightbox Accordion here to share with you my top six pieces of gear that I absolutely cannot live without. Now on this list, you're not gonna hear anything about preamps, overpriced plugins. I couldn't give a less about stuff like that. For me, the name of the game is functionality, efficiency, and just being able to get right to work without having to futz around with stuff that really doesn't matter. So with that being said, the first piece of gear that I wanna talk about is my direct box. Now, I mainly use this for bass and guitar, but for me, it's really important for when I'm tracking guitars. Now, recording DIs with your heavy guitar tracks is pretty much standard practice amongst pros in the metal community. But believe it or not, there are still people out there not doing it. And honestly, I cannot live without this thing. Even if I don't plan on reamping, I still use the DI for reference when I'm editing. In other words, I will absolutely not record guitar tracks without recording a DI. So if I were to ever find myself in a recording session without one of these, I would be an unhappy camper. Now this is a radial DI, but to be honest with you, I'll use anything. The thing about buying a high quality DI like this is that it's built like a tank. It'll probably last you forever. I've had this for about 12 years now and it has never let me down. So again, a functional piece of gear that I use on every single project that I tackle. And this brings me to piece of gear Number two that I absolutely cannot live without. Small diaphragm condenser mics. Now these are SM81s, but to me, again, it doesn't matter as long as I have some form of small diaphragm condenser mic. I don't care if it's super cheap or super high end, as long as it's a small diaphragm condenser. So now why is this so important? Well, I'll tell you. The way I approach drum miking, particularly with the cymbals, is I like to spot mic my cymbals. In other words, I wanna have maximum control over my cymbals within the mix. I produce super heavy music, and in heavy music, a lot of times these details will get lost with a simple spaced pair over your drum kit. That might work for indie rock, or maybe even other forms of hard rock. But for me, I like maximum control, and if the drummer asks to turn up his china, I wanna be able to do that. Or if I wanna bring up the ride cymbal just a touch louder at a specific section of the song, I wanna be able to do that as well. Now, full disclosure, I can get away with using large diaphragm condenser mics for this job, but I'm a huge fan of small diaphragm condenser mics because again, when I aim a mic at something, that's really what I want the most of in that particular mic. So for example, if I have this on my left crash, I wanna mostly hear my left crash coming through this thing. And again, I'm not picky, I'm not a brand snob. These are SM81s, but I often use the Samson CO2 condenser mics as well, and they're $100 for the pair. So again, for me, it really doesn't matter as long as they're small diaphragm condenser mics. And this brings me to piece of gear number three that I absolutely cannot live without. Some form of tube screamer. Now this is an Ibanez TS9, I think. Yes, it's an Ibanez TS9. I don't give a crap what it is, as long as it's a decent tube screamer. There are guitar players out there that obsess over this tube screamer, and this tube screamer was released in 1979, and this one was released in 1992, and I like the 1992 better than 1979. No, the 1979 is better than 1992. Who cares? Now, I don't really use this for distortion. I use it to tighten up the low end when I'm tracking guitars. In other words, I keep the drive very low, I use it in front of an amp, and it does something to the tone where it just tightens up the pick attack. And for the super aggressive heavy music that I work on, it does wonders. Now let me just say this. This is a physical tube screamer. I use software-based tube screamers in amp sims as well, and they do the exact same thing. The idea is having that extra stage of gain before the preamp section really tightens up the low end when you're recording heavy guitar tracks. So if I were ever in a recording session and a guitar player refused to use one of these, I ain't doing the session. So again, this is the TS9, does the job just fine. I've used the DOD version, I'm pretty sure. And now they have all different ones. And to me, they're all so close that it doesn't matter. Again, I'm using them just to tighten up the low end, not so much for distortion. And this brings me to piece of gear number four that I can't live without. SM57s. If you were to tell me that I could never use an SM57 for the rest of my life, I'd be pretty sad. I'll never forget when I was in college for audio, um, we had to do a project where we had to do an entire song recorded only with SM57s. Now when I say only SM57s, I mean drums, drum overheads, vocals, guitars, everything. And you know what was amazing? The songs came out great. I remember being amazed at how good these actually sounded on cymbals. I could use an SM57 on kick drums. I use them all the time on toms, snares, of course, guitar amps, bass amps, and even vocals. They're just workhorse microphones, nothing fancy. And a bonus is that they are built like tanks. I've had these for about 14 years. They're still going strong and they've been through hell and back, believe me. 
So now the reason why they're top on my list is because when it comes to guitar tone, I've tried so many different microphones. And yeah, sometimes I'll blend in an SM7B or 421 or even the 906 or 609. And they're all cool, but nothing beats an SM57 on the right spot of a V30, in my opinion. So let me just put it this way. The few times I didn't have access to SM57s when I was working out of other studios, I wasn't a happy guy. And this brings me to piece of gear number five that I cannot live without. My 2012 MacBook Pro. Yes, you heard me right. All of the projects that I mix and record are recorded on this ancient, decrepit, 2012 MacBook Pro. At the time of this taping, this computer is eight years old. Ancient in computer years. Now I have given it a few upgrades. It has a solid state drive. I've upgraded the RAM to about 16 gigs. And to be honest, this thing is still a beast. I do all of my audio production and video editing on this computer. I really should upgrade because it is getting old, but I'm gonna be honest with you. I can't live without this thing. It's rock solid and pretty much my entire business is run off of this thing. Now it's funny, I see online people obsessing over computer specs and building these insane machines. And in my opinion, you can never have enough power. That's awesome. But I'm gonna be honest, before I bought this computer in 2012, I did full albums on a 2006 MacBook Pro with only two gigs of RAM. That's it. If you're recording live music, like live drums, guitars, bass, vocals, and you're not doing a ton of virtual instrument work, you really don't need that insane of a machine. And again, although I should upgrade and I will be soon, my 2012, still serves me well on a daily basis. I absolutely cannot live without it. And this brings me to piece of gear number six. And this is sort of a cheat. This isn't really a piece of gear per se, but it's my studio, my vibed out horror themed retro gaming studio. Now, why can I not live without this place? The truth is, is that I need to be inspired. I hate working in a super bland, sterile, atmosphere. And what I mean by bland is just fluorescent lighting, no vibe, no character, the type of place that sucks the life out of you. I can't stand working in those environments. I need my Friday the 13th. I need my bands having fun, drinking some beers at the tiki table. So for me, having retro horror playing is more important than working on an SSL. I know gearheads are gonna hate, but at the end of the day, all that matters is that the clients are happy and whatever's coming out of the speakers is sounding sick. So there you have it. Those are the top six pieces of gear that I absolutely cannot live without. And again, no preamps, consoles, tube microphones were on that list. None of that stuff matters to me. I've already gone through that phase, I'm over it. I'd rather have functional gear that gets the job done and be working within a fun, creative, inspiring atmosphere where the bands are kicking ass. For me, that's what it's all about. So please let me know. I would love to hear your top six pieces of gear that you can't live without. Now, I'm sure your list is gonna be much different than mine, but that's okay. For me, that's what makes this exciting. I love hearing others' opinions and how other artists get their work done. If we were all exactly the same, life would be pretty boring. If you found this video helpful, like, comment, subscribe, and share. And do not forget to click the little bell icon so you can be notified every time I upload one of my weekly videos on all things metal and rock production. You can both like and follow me on Facebook and Instagram. Links are in the description below. And be sure to download my five-step guide for better heavy mixes so you can achieve better results with the gear you have right now. There's a link below right within the video's description where you can download your free guide. Till next time, happy recording.